Path of Exile Expeditions brings a bunch of new things to the table, but one of the most important things of all is Ward, a new defensive mechanic. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at what Ward is, how it will function, as well as some of the new uniques teased in the 3.15 reveal to do with this mechanic. Let's jump into it. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I'm back with another 3.15 Expedition video. Now, as I said, we've got a lot of content to get through. If you haven't seen my previous videos, uh, I've got one on the overview itself of Expedition League and then the live reaction video as well. And there's a bunch more coming with all of the new content. But today we're going to be talking about Ward, a new defensive mechanic that's going to be coming in Path of Exile 3.15. Uh, now, right before we start, if you haven't hit that sub button down below, it's literally a click away and it means the world to me. We're trying to get to 50k subs by the end of Expedition League. So if you want to help out, help out. Uh, but let's get into it. Now, rather than me trying to fumble over my words and explain exactly what Ward is, I'm going to let Chris do a little bit of an explanation. Then we're going to jump over to a special paint uh, uh, image that I've gotten up for you guys to really talk in depth about Ward, and then we're going to look at some uniques as well. So let's jump into it. The Calgarian people are not from Rayclust, so the items do not have the same defensive properties that ours do. Instead of armor, evasion, and energy shield, they have Ward. This new base type is a pair of boots that grants Ward and can get mods that improve it. The way that Ward works is that you have a certain amount of it, and that amount is fully deducted from the first incoming hit that you receive. Your Ward is then disabled, and takes 5 seconds to re-enable. At that point, the next hit you receive is substantially mitigated in the same way. It's quite a different style of defensive property, and works very well in conjunction with systems like Evasion, Block, or Dodge. As the undead- So, that's pretty much uh, what Ward is. Now, I'm going to break it down for you. As I said, we're going to jump to paint right here. Now, this is an orb of life, health, there's some energy shield there as well, as you can see, just to give you a little bit of an explanation of what exactly could be going on with Ward. Now, keep in mind, I don't know exactly, specifically, how this is going to look or uh, function completely, but we can get a really, really good idea of what Ward is from that description that Chris gave us. Uh, now, Ward is basically going to be on top of your pools, right? So you've got your life and you've got your energy shield. So usually energy shield's going to be on top of life, uh, but then Ward is probably going to be something like this on your health pool, right? You're gonna see something like this. So say for example, right here, we've got, we've got our life. Uh, life equals, let's say uh, 500. Uh, ES equals, uh, let's say 4,000, right? That's obviously not to scale. But then you've got a little bit of uh, ward here, and the ward is looking at, you know, a ward, you've got about 300 ward right here, right? So uh, that's what this is all looking like. Now, ward functions in a way that any damage that hits you will deplete your ward. So anywhere from one damage to 1000 damage is going to deplete your ward that you do have right there. Now, uh, is this going to go through if you say, for example, you take 1000 damage to your ward, is it going to go through? Is it going to hit your, your life pool and then your, uh, or, or your ES pool as well? Yes, it will. But any damage that's not as much as your ward will completely deplete your ward. Then there's going to be a five second uh, delay on recharge of ward. Now, this is probably not going to be the same as energy shield where any damage that you take delays further the energy shield recharge. Once your ward is depleted, it's a flat five seconds. No matter how many times you're taking damage, that will then uh, come back after five seconds, meaning that you can then mitigate again. So the upsides to something like this is it's really, really good at adding an extra layer on top of potential one shots. So as Chris did mention, it's really, really good with things like block, evasion, and dodge and everything like that. Uh, where it doesn't function too well is having a very small amount of ward. It's basically just like a tiny, tiny little bit more effective health on top. Uh, however, it's going to stop those potential small hits and large hits kind of breaking through your barriers, uh, stopping your ES from recharging or anything like that. It's going to be really, really interesting to see how this does actually play out in the grand scheme of things. Now, this is uh, as far as I can really see what Ward is going to be. If you have any differing opinions or you think I've missed something really important, 
please let me know. Uh, I don't want to be spreading misinformation. If it turns out that I've got something completely wrong, I've really tried to look at this as much as I could, but please, please let me know. I'm pretty sure that this is exactly how it's going to function, but you know, people can be wrong sometimes. However, we're gonna jump down and look at a couple of the uniques that are going to be coming through as well. Uh, so when you're hit, your ward is completely depleted and reduces damage dealt to you by that amount, which is really, really interesting, right? So that's basically what I'm saying. Your ward will reduce the damage that is dealt to you by the amount of the hit that you take. Now there's a couple of really interesting unique items. Now you did see the base item that Chris did show, the boots. We can expect a base item for each type of uh, equipment, base equipment, like your helmet, your chest piece, your gloves, um, your boots. Uh, but we're gonna have a look at this as well. So first of all, we've got Faith Guard Runic Helm. Now that's probably the base uh, type, the Runic Helm for the ward there. So you do get faster restoration of ward. So 26% faster restoration of ward. Uh, calculates to around about 1.25 seconds less. So you've got about 3.75 seconds uh, to uh, regain your ward, which is actually not too much time at all. I can really see stacking a bunch of restoration of ward being extremely strong. Uh, increased light radius, a little bit of a meme there, but then increases and reductions to maximum energy shield instead apply to ward. Now this is extremely interesting right here. Um, this is going to be really, really good with something like a trickster, where you're going to be getting benefits of some energy shield uh, through your ghost shrouds, or you might be taking nodes around the trickster area, which are going to be giving increases to uh, energy shield uh, that you're not really using too much energy shield, but then applying to ward and going straight into dodge, a bunch of things like acrobatics, phase acrobatics, you're uh, you know getting all of that sort of stuff happening. Now, something really interesting, it does says, say increases and reductions. If we actually go to the tree itself very quickly right now, I'll point out something very, very interesting to you all. Uh, now, this says 30% less energy shield on acrobatics. That less is not an increase or a reduction. So this means that acrobatics will not be negatively affecting your ward. So this is really, 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 really strong here. So uh, any of your nodes on the tree, like your increases to evasion and, uh, oh sorry, evasion and energy shield up through here, void barrier are gonna be super, super nice to then actually instead increase your ward with this helmet. I honestly think that this helmet is going to be very, very strong defensively and will turn out being the meta for some hardcore builds uh, like Ranger and, um, and Shadow or Trickster, I should say, uh, doing a bunch of evasion and dodge. Then moving on to Cardigan's Crown. It's another Runic Crown, actually, uh, but this is uh, another really, really interesting helmet right here. It says, never deal critical strikes, but it also grants you Battle Mage. Now, Battle Mage, if we have a little look, Battle Mage is the uh, uh, the only thing that you can get through, or you can only get it through uh, Inquisitor right now on Instruments of Virtue or two unique items in the game. Um, uh, but now Battle Mage, is on an item, meaning that literally any Ascendancy can use Battle Mage. Now, obviously the downside is quite heavy. Never deal critical strikes. In a lot of builds that will be wanting to use Battle Mage, scaling those skills, you will want to be doing critical strike. Now, this in uh, some really, really niche cases is going to be very strong on, would you guess it, Ignite builds. This is gonna be really, really strong on Ignite builds. Say for example, things like Fireball. Say for example, things like uh, Fire Burst. <laughs> um, uh, if that doesn't get nerfed too heavily with its added damage effectiveness, we're going to be able to get a ton of added damage on things like Starves or Swords or anything like that. Apply that to our flat damage of our Fireball and apply that to Ignites. And in something like an Ignite build, you're not really wanting to deal critical strikes. Now, what is the downside here? You'll be missing out on things like your um, elemental overload, which you know you wanna be dealing critical strikes with elemental overload. So there's big downsides with no dealing critical strikes, but there's also big upsides as well. I don't think that this helmet is actually going to be showing a lot in the meta, but it will be really interesting to see. And then here's just a little bit of an indication of you know, uh, the Grim Soul Runic Greaves you can see here. So we can probably assume that uh, we're gonna get things like, uh, you know, the Runic Crown, Runic Greaves, uh, Runic uh, runic Garb or something like that uh, for the chest piece, probably going to be some things like that, right? Uh, and these are mostly, the uniques I would say are going to be coming from these unique bosses, uh, which is really, really, really interesting. I'm very excited to fight these bosses. As I said in the previous video, uh, I'm gonna be rushing these bosses as quick as I can. 
Uh, that's all I really have to say about Ward. What do you think about this mechanic? Leave a comment down below if you think this is going to be really, really interesting. I think that this is going to be super, super strong for evasion-based builds, and that's probably where I'm going to be pushing my first character as a super strong, uh, potentially even uh, Ranger, Raider. We'll have to see come the Balance Manifesto and patch notes. I'm not saying anything about what kind of builds I'm going to be releasing yet because we just don't know what is changing. Uh, one last little thing I would say is because this is going to be such a massive meta change, please be diligent in making sure that you don't decide your build before this balance manifesto and these patch notes come out, because there are going to be so many things that are going to be changing. Um, I'm definitely going to be releasing a bunch of content about the new skills, potentially even a, a build idea for each of the new skills or supports or anything like that. Definitely not build guides, I won't have time for that, but maybe a build idea for each of them. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button. And as always, Badger out.